right here is a Roblox thumbnail that I made quite a while ago inside of Photoshop. And as you can see, it has a load of different layers with all these different effects for like the flame and the patties and stuff. <laughs> and I'm going to be trying to recreate this GFX in only 60 minutes using a brand new free Photoshop alternative called Affinity. Well, at least the, the free version is new. Can I achieve nearly the same look or will it completely fall apart? Let's find out. So this right here is Affinity photo it is by canva as you can see because recently it was bought by canva and they made it completely free and if we just scroll down for a bit you can see it's got a whole lot of different features it's not only working with pixels like you do in photoshop there's also vector which for anyone who doesn't know it essentially means you can have these images uh that are uh, just don't have pixels like you can literally just scroll into them forever you know what i mean it's a completely different type of image and the fact that affinity comes with both of these it's almost an alternative for both photos Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator so it's super awesome and as you can see because Affinity recently bought it they released it for completely free so bro without further ado let's just open this software up and try to figure out how this all works I've never used it all right I gotta sign up all right so I'm not gonna lie I did have a little bit of a test play with it earlier and it's a little bit different to Photoshop at least with how you move around like you can use pretty much all the same keybinds as you do in Photoshop it's control to zoom in and out instead of of alt and you can also use the like middle scroll wheel you can click on the scroll wheel to move around like this i think that's super nice and i don't know why photoshop doesn't have that on this project i did use a bunch of different render passes but i'm gonna try not to use them i'm just gonna use the base render and see what we can do so let's import that i have absolutely no clue where to even start but let's just go ahead and start the timer and see see how we go i guess all right three two one let's go that is a one hour timer count counting down all right that's a bit intimidating let's go uh, i'll put the timer up in the corner okay first things first we're gonna do some sort of color corrections or something that's usually what i do first step is like camera raw filter is there like a camera raw filter layer uh we need to find like a filter there's got to be a filters thing somewhere pixel or oh, filters filters is there any like is there like a camera raw filter what's develop what is develop okay this might actually be like camera raw filter right here all right we got expose brightness contrast oh there's not much settings though what are these detail refinement what does this do oh okay so this is just like sharpening the image okay so we've got yeah this is pretty much camera roll filter here what is this lens vertical <laughs> Yo, what the hell? All right, uh, I guess you can do that. That's pretty cool though. Photoshop does have this in camera raw filter, but it doesn't let you do the horizontal or vertical to my knowledge. Okay, there's a lot of cool settings here, but we can't really be wasting time with all that just yet. Let's just start with just some like basic settings. Turn up the exposure a bit. Just mess around with these different settings until it looks pretty good. Okay, I don't think that is too bad. How do I apply it? Is this gonna be destructive though? I hope I can like edit it. No way it resets, so it's not, it's destructive. That's applied to my layer. Did I forget to adjust it or something? Uh, that's weird. Anyway, okay, there's a bit of a camera roll filter done. I want to, I guess we'll do some shading. Let's see how easy it is to do some shading. I'll add in a pixel layer, get a brush. I'm guessing this is the brush, yep. And then, uh, I don't know half of these settings. What does this do right here? Uh, I guess we'll find out. Can I, uh, uh, oh no how do i do this okay this is hardness okay that's good to know nice so we'll do hardness zero i guess this right here is opacity right yeah okay cool uh what does the drip one mean maybe that's flow what is it can i hover over it? okay it's flow perfect perfect that means we can kind of as you can see here we can do this we rub back and forth and it kind of gets harder all right let's uh how do i adjust the brush size without like having to go up here and change? i guess we're just gonna have to do it manually i don't have enough time really uh we're gonna make the layer okay it's kind of laid out similar we're gonna put it to i think we'll do overlay since we're doing it on kind of white skin here my brush is too big okay how to okay how to adjust brush size keybind <laughs> i don't even know what to search affinity okay i just searched it up uh uh you do control alt okay control alt and then what do you do oh, okay you gotta you gotta click and drag it. okay in photoshop it's like i think it's right click but in here it's left click okay i actually remember doing the original project what i did is i kind of painted in these glasses black and then i i think i did it white and then i painted over the uh shining bits there and it kind of looked quite good so let's do that here oh i don't know if that looks too good man <laughs> that is kind of that is kind of shocking uh yeah let's just kind of make it bright i guess we'll just do this all right
All right, we're getting there. I mean, I've spent about three minutes shading one character, but to be fair, I actually do think that does look pretty nice. Don't lie to me, bro. It's not perfect, but it does look pretty nice, I do believe. So I think we should probably get onto the shading the next character now. And I do need a mask, bro, because this looks terrible when it's not masked, but it'll be fine. All right, let's go onto the next character, man. That looks really shockingly bad, bro. It doesn't fade like well enough. This is annoying. We're just gonna turn this down to like 5% and see if we can fix it a bit. It should like really fade. Okay, that's a bit better. That's a bit nicer. Okay, I like that. Why is it adjusting the rotation? What? What are you doing? Why is it adjusting the rotation? Bro, stop. Stop. Uh, I don't know how to adjust it now. It started adjusting the rotation. Okay, I somehow changed it back. I don't know what I clicked, but I changed it back. Okay. What? What is shape and spacing? Why does it keep changing, bro? What is sh What? I've got three brushes what is happening why are there three brushes bro what? how do i switch what was that oh you just click that's dumb why would you make it so you click to switch between them when it's clicking and dragging to change the value that's so weird but okay man whatever well it, it looks like i'm not doing any more shading because why is it doing this it's got like no flow so I, i've i've clicked some setting somewhere that's messed it up i think because i don't know why it's so intense now what the hell have i just got a normal brush right what why is it doing that i guess we're done with shading then that's that's what we're gonna have to deal with we definitely gotta mask it to the character though that is definitely a big problem because as you can see it currently isn't masked so let's see how the masking process is like inside of affinity okay so i had to enable some weird like ai thing but i guess now i can use this to mask stuff or i guess make a selection right okay that's pretty cool you can hover over stuff i guess you can click it hey man that's a pretty solid selection it's a little bit off but that's pretty cool I guess if I just like select the character. Okay, wait, it actually gave a pretty accurate selection. I'm not gonna lie, definitely not perfect. To be fair, I, I hate doing any selection inside of Photoshop as well, so. All right, there we go. Took me four minutes to select one character. One character. All right, on to the next guy. This is gonna take a while. All right, we're gonna go with that. I really can't be bothered masking anymore. Let's see how good is that mask, bro. Okay, I actually don't think it is too bad. We gotta get onto some more effects, man. I definitely want, because in the original version, doing all the like patties and everything was definitely the funnest part. So I wanna do that. Find one that matches the angle of your patty so even this could work i think that could actually work so we'll go with this we'll see if we can make this work paste it in and what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna select it nice and then we'll just set it as a mask that'll then give us just literally a burger patty like that and then uh, i should be able to move it into place wait there's a liquefy isn't there let's try liquefy maybe doing a uh, pixel i saw liquefy maybe doing liquefy this is not the way i usually do it but i think we're gonna have do since i don't really know how to stretch it and stuff okay that one's pretty terrible man but let's move this up here and i guess we're just gonna have to do the exact same thing uh we'll do like vibrance i guess that's annoying that it does that little menu i want to clip mask it can i clip mask great clipping mask what what the hell oh that's weird what the hell why does it do it like that i mean i guess that's all right just get it looking a bit more like a patty let's do curves as well nice we're gonna cover it up with a flame in fact from the render i do actually have the flame I must have used a VDB or something like that. Hopefully we can just set this to screen and put it into place. And then let's see if we can do like, make it just shining a bit like this. Just make it glow a little bit more. Nice. I don't think that is actually too bad. I do definitely want to do the tomatoes because having hollow tomatoes is not a good idea. So let's just get like tomato. Uh, we need the same sort of angle. It's going to be hard to find one with that hard of an angle. And then this layer, I'm just going to grab a brush. And you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to do shading on a tomato right now. We're going to do just like make it a bit darker around just the edges. Maybe not up there, just a bit. I think we definitely got to adjust the colors of it. Okay, we're going to do uh, hue saturation. I think that's HSL, right? Yeah. Okay, there we go. We just had to make it a bit more pink, I guess. A little bit more desaturated, maybe. Something like that. That is, oh, that is horrendous. That is horrendous, bro. That is horrendous. Let's just see if we can adjust the whole tomato itself though we're gonna do a curves and just make it brighter i guess 
guess. It actually looks pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie. We just have to adjust this. I don't know why it's so bright. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna do about this. I think we're not gonna notice it. <laughs> okay. Oh no, I've got 15 minutes. I've got so much more to do to it. I've been focused on these tomatoes for like 10 years. Let's just do, uh, I wanna do the drink because it, it, the drink, the cup definitely needs to be full. Uh, we're just gonna make a selection of this then, like that, and then uh, I guess we'll just do that, right? Nice, that's not too shabby. Now I'm gonna make it purple. <laughs> I'm gonna make it purple. I guess literally what we're gonna do is just draw in like some shadows like here. This actually might fix it a bit if we do like just a bit of shadows maybe. Yeah, that looks good. That looks much better. That kind of actually makes it fit into the scene a lot nicer. It should be a lot darker on this side, I think, according to the laws of physics or whatever. Okay, so the final things I really want to do here is first of all, I want to make it like blur the further it go back. Now before I did actually notice in that AI button, there is the select side subject or where was it the uh portrait blur so we can make it blur around the characters hopefully it's good how does this look radius okay yeah we're gonna put the blur there oh that is definitely not a very perfect selection we're gonna make it okay we'll just make it blur a tiny bit okay we are coming up on only 10 minutes left i need a sky i need a sky bro i need a sky so let's just go hopefully the usb no way the gfx usb is a plug in bro it isn't plugged in. Okay. I need to plug in the, the GFX USB. You, you guys are going to see what the GFX USB is right now. Hopefully it loads. Uh, it should be F. No way. I got it plugged in, but it's not working. No way. We're literally just going to search up sky, bro. See if any of these would be good, like this one. Sure, we'll go with this one. It's kind of low quality, but I do believe there is an AI upscaler in here. Let's go ahead. I do, as I said, believe that there is some sort of AI under here. Upscale or uh, super resolve. I think it's this. I think it is this. Let's see how good this super resolve is, this AI one. Uh, let's see here. So this is before on the right and then after on the left. Before and after. Let's see. Okay. Okay, cool. That definitely upscaled it a lot and I can keep going too. Cool, man. Yeah, that's actually cool. I'm actually really happy with that. One thing I do want to do though is this sign. I don't like the colors on the sign. So we'll just make a quick selection of the sign then. Hopefully it leads me. Why isn't it leading me? Hello? Hello? Why isn't it leading me select the sign, man? Please, please. Selection brush. Okay. No, man. What are you doing? Okay. Please don't mess up. Okay, good. We're going to have to deal with it because I've literally only got five minutes and I want to add like depth of field. I want to add fog. Okay, that should be fine. I think I'm going to go control J. That should duplicate it into its own layer, right? Yeah. And maybe if I set this to overlay, that might... Okay, there was one of the settings I saw. Okay, color burn. Nice, we'll just turn down the opacity. For sure, that adds a lot more color to it. Yeah, I like that. Dude, what do I do? I got four minutes. I have to add fog and I have no idea how to. How to select depth. Uh, affinity. To select depth and affinity, you can use the select sample depth feature. How do I do that? It is in pixel and then pixel selection. Pixel selection, select sample depth. Let's see. Oh, that is actually really cool. Look at that. You can select the depth of it. We'll do just behind them like that. Then we'll make it apply. That's going to give us the selection of it. We'll just do a shape and then we'll do the mask button. And then hopefully, look at that. Not too bad if we just decrease the opacity. <sighs> It's not too good, man. It's not too good. We're going to have to stick with it because I've got two minutes left. Make sure to manually select this tree as well. Select the tree and then on here, we'll literally just paint it in white and that should paint in the... Uh... Nice, man. Let's do... Hmm, hmm. Pixel filters, blur. We'll do this one. I can blur only the selection on this layer. So if I just blur it just a bit, just two pixels there. We've got 30 seconds. What do I do in 30 seconds? Uh, okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection selection please please be quick please 20 seconds i want to make this brighter i want to make this brighter i think it's just a bit too dark let's see if i can do this in 30 seconds 13 seconds to go oh no please don't mess it up just select it please 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 six seconds curves make it just a bit brighter three two one 
that's the timer up okay man and that is it that right there is what i did in 60 minutes one hour inside of affinity i think it looks pretty good bro right, so right here i have the base render and right here i have the uh photoshop version and we're just gonna kind of compare it so this is what i made in affinity in only 60 minutes this right here is what we started off with this is the base render right here gray bland straight out of blender uh and it's definitely a huge improvement so i guess without further ado let's compare the affinity version to what i did in photoshop uh, let's see three two one there we go that is oh okay there's actually like i do think i like this version better but the photoshop version is too yellow i'm looking at it now it's just way too yellow compared to the affinity one which it just has a nicer a bit more of a blue tone all right man so to wrap up the video i'm gonna give a quick little review of affinity what do i think well i think it's great i think it's actually a really good photoshop alternative is it better than photoshop i don't think so it's kind of on the same level though do i think you guys should go ahead and try it out definitely i think you guys should go ahead and try it out if you don't know which sort of software to use i think affinity is definitely worth learning if you haven't learned anything else already for me personally i'm going to be sticking to photoshop at least for pixel stuff but for vectors i definitely am going to start using this because i do do some things with vectors and svgs and things sometimes so i will actually be trying out the vector affinity does seem like it's gonna since it was just only recently bought by canva it's probably gonna have a really good future going forward you know it's gonna keep getting updated and keep staying free and it's probably going to keep getting better and better so in the end i do think that affinity is really great make sure to like subscribe if you haven't already shout out to all of the youtube members thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all next time peace out